무배당 무배당 김부 무령체에 들었거든요. 근데 지금 그 사람이 사망했거든요. 강 호 순 is named one of Korea's top five serial killers. And what makes Kang's case so sick and unique is that he was known to be very charming to females and had an extreme obsession with them. A sick womanizer. He's often called Korea's Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was a serial killer in the United States who was also known to use his charms and good looks to lure women. In this video, you'll also notice eerie similarities between Ted Bundy and Kang Ho Sun. Kang's mind is absolutely dark, and we will get into how crazy of a psychopath he is. Kang is also the last known or captured serial killers in Korea. There might be others out there, but he was the last one. And yes, I am in my Halloween costume this year. I am your fancy castle maid. I'll clean the castle for you, my lord. Can't believe it's already Halloween. And you guys know, a couple years ago, I had a sick Halloween song out. It's also one of my favorite songs that I've ever wrote. Does anyone remember me when I was a singer? Whenever I think of Halloween, it reminds me of the time that I toured in Europe. One of my favorite countries that I visited was Scotland because there's so many histories behind Scotland and beautiful castles and out there. And did you know recently I became a Lady Grace? Yes, I officially got the Lady Prefix because I have bought a land in Scotland. I'm serious, I'm not joking. I literally have a one square foot of land that I own in Scotland through established titles. Through established titles, you can purchase souvenir plots of land and based on historic Scottish customs, this allows you to call yourself a lord or a lady. They pledge to keep the entire woodland free from any use. They partner up with One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. So this is such a creative and a fun way that you wanna to give to your friend, your family, or to yourself so that you can officially get the title lord or lady it just sounds so fancy you also get a unique plot number on a private estate in edelston scotland here you can see my actual plot right here that's my land yes i can officially use the lady title now in the credit cards plane tickets and anywhere else that allows you to use the prefixes so if you want to build a little crazy tv kingdom in scotland you can actually use my code down in the description box below crazy tv to get 10 percent off it also really helps to support mystery true crimes like my channel so thank you so much to savage Titles, and Lady Grace will get back to the video. Kang Ho Sun was born on September 10th, 1969. He was the middle son of five siblings. Unlike a lot of serial killer stories we hear of, where their childhood was rough, having bad parents, poverty, you know, they want to get revenge when they're older, Kang actually grew up in a fairly normal childhood and family. It was said even with five siblings, they grew up in like a very rural farming area, but their parents were able to support their children. He also had very good grades growing up, along with good grades, as you could see, like looking at his younger pictures when he was in school, he did have a very good looking warm, innocent, just inviting face to him, right? It's not like he looks like a pedo or creep. He also did Taekwondo and, you know, went to the army. Like all men are required to go to the army. So he just barely had a normal privilege, honestly, back then kind of life, which was very similar to Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy also grew up and he said himself, he grew up in a wonderful home with two loving parents. The parents went to church. They never smoked. They never did drugs. And interesting, Ted Bundy also said he grew up with five siblings and he was the middle child. I thought that was very crazy. Kang grew up, he became an adult, and a lot of his friends and colleagues say that Kang was so cocky and confident in his looks. A little more than he should have because, I mean, as he got older, like, not cute. But regardless of our opinion, he still had a very naive, kind way of approaching people. And that was his first expression. A lot of people thought of him as an innocent farm boy. His neighbors describe him of having a bubbly personality. He was hardworking, at least what it seemed from the outside, and wouldn't mind having him as like their son-in-law. So every person who spoke about Kang actually had good things to say about it. But Kang was a total two-face, almost scary in my opinion. So according to his guy friends and co-workers, male co-workers, they saw a side of him that was just too obsessive. Again, along with him being obsessed with his looks and having so much confidence, he was obsessed with females and would often brag about how many girls he was able to date, how many girls he was able to hook up with and get their numbers. And it was in 
high count. He'd say that he can seduce any woman within 10 minutes. And he was showing this off to his male friends. And to prove that, throughout Kung's life, he was married four times. Four times is a lot even in like the States and the Western culture, let alone in Asia, in Korea, marrying more than once is considered taboo. First time Kong got married when he was in his early 20s in 1992, where he was approximately married for five years to his first wife. He did have two boys and they got divorced. He was married a second time whom he met his second wife during his first marriage. They both had a son, but divorced all within seven months. In 2003, at the age of 34, Kang would marry his third wife, who was 12 years his junior, so his wife was 22 at the time. That's incredibly young. They'd be married for two months and got a divorce. From meeting, living together, marriage, and divorce, all of this happened within less than a year. While he was married to his third wife, he would meet another woman who would become his fourth wife. And as soon as he got divorced, they were living together. Contrary to his outer appearance, it seemed like there was something about this guy that was very charming. People who came across, especially his ex-wives, describe him as very mannered to other people. Again, he was charming. He was very good at talking. Although he had an innocent looking face behind the scenes and closed doors at night, he did have some aggressive sexual tendency towards you know, his wives. There's some reports out there, some ex-wives claiming that he was very aggressive sexually. And then there's some reports where later they say that they only had good things to say about this guy. So I'm not really sure which one is correct, but either ways, nothing was reported back then. I mean, to be honest, this guy's only 170 centimeters. He's quite short, he's small. I don't know what was about this guy, but females, you know, he was able to get females, like he wasn't lying. Kong throughout the years would run different businesses, such as having a small restaurant, operating a massage shop, had some animals, had some farm animals that he took care of, and even owned a husky dog breeding business. The only really red flag we saw was of him and his husky dogs. Apparently he had a couple of dogs, husky dogs under his care, and he would neglect the animals. He would take these kind, looking I'm a dog lover kind of photos but later it was found out that he would consume some of his dog he would also neglect them they found out that these husky dogs were starving and he left them to freeze to death during the winter I really really dislike animal neglectors so after taking this photo with his husky dog he would put this in his car women love dogs you know we love cute animals and this was one of his tactics to really create this image for him but behind his married life Kang had this obsession narcissism within himself and he had this like weird obsession of him proving to others other men that he was a huge womanizer he cheated on all his wives he'd ask his colleagues for a date with anyone that they knew while he was married and had other girlfriends. He would literally beg to get blind dates. He would also take his car around the night scene and would ask a girl's numbers, would show off to other friends, like, look how many numbers I was able to get this weekend. He was also a extreme health freak. He had this obsession with keeping like a slim weight, obsession with eating only healthy food. Anything that came with keeping his body healthy, he, he was up for. He followed a strict diet and specifically said he would not eat noodles or wheat products because it was bad for his health. Not only with himself, but with his girlfriends and wives of keeping a slim fit. In 2005, only a few months into his fourth marriage, he would put a huge amount of life insurance towards his his wife and his mother-in-law. And very soon after the insurance application, only one week into his legal marriage with his fourth wife, ironically, when the three of them were sleeping over his mother-in-law's house, there was a huge fire. And Kang was the only one who was able to escape. And his fourth wife and his mother-in-law passed away. He tried to claim his insurance and it would have mounted to about $400,000 back in 2005. But of course, the insurance company got a little suspicious, started to investigate, and he was called to the police multiple times to try and see if this was real or not, because it did seem suspicious. I do not believe Kong actually got the money, but this is the starting point where he claims that he started to go a little psycho. For the next year, he would spend a lot of money in the nightlife, at clubs, 
He also went to therapy because he claims that his mental state was not great. His businesses that he did started to fail. He, his son actually also got into a motorcycle accident. He was being investigated by the police for the insurance fraud, possible insurance fraud, although he claimed that he had nothing to do with it, but nobody was believing him. And for that year, he felt like his life was just going to shiz. For whatever reason, Kong snapped at the age of 37 in his mid to late 30s and started a killing spree. <laughs> Now, Kong claims that his death of his fourth wife and all of this is what triggered the killing spree, but not a lot of people believe his excuses. How could your love for your fourth wife start a killing spree? And if you look at his patterns in the past, his obsession with females did not start here. It started a long time ago. Starting from 2006 in the Gyeonggi Providence, one by one, there were multiple stories of young females going missing, never to be found. The town started to get very worried and worried for their young daughters and wives. But no one was ever arrested and again, these women would not be found. When there were so many missing cases, Korea's most well-known criminal investigator said that he was in charge of finding out what happened. And he actually went to the town and he would stand in bus stops to try and kind of surveillance what this town was like. And he would notice that like friendly neighbors who lived there would come up to him with their car saying, hey, what are you doing? It's so cold outside. If you live near here, I'll give you a ride. So the investigator, it clicked. He immediately noticed that there was a possibility that someone would use the town's kindness for their own benefits. So this is what Kung started to do. His first successful victim was in September of 2006. A 23 year old worker, Yoon, who was on her way to her company would be stopped by Kung and he told her to get in. He would tell her like, hey, I'm on the same way i'll give you a ride crazy thing is before he would do this he actually bought a very nice car just to do this can you imagine someone going shopping and buying a car just to kidnap people and when he would roll down the window the females would see that he would have that picture of him and his husky you know allowing him to give us like nice neat innocent Oh, pretty good looking, warm looking man who's, who's probably gonna give me probably a safe ride. And same exact tactic like Ted Bundy who used his cars and girls who needed a ride in the streets. Ted Bundy had this way of, of charming the girls, talking to them, and he had this smile. He was slim and tall. There was some like calming charm about Ted Bundy as well where the girls would come into their car willingly. On top of that, for both cases, when some of the girls would be a little like hesitant obviously kong and ted both would use this technique of do i look like a bad guy to you i would use this kind of like little mind tricks to make the girls feel bad for rejecting their requests bad for putting down like a kind gesture of someone wanting to give you a ride as soon as the girl would get in he'd overpower them grapes an SA would happen kong would then strangle her and this is a little bit of like a signature way that he did he would use female stockings a lot of females used to wear these like clear stockings he used stockings on purpose and it's, using stockings to strangle someone is not easy stockings are very stretchy and kind of weak but criminal psychologists say that he specifically used this because it was a way of him slowly letting the victims unalive and enjoying the pain that he was watching like enjoying the pain and suffering for the whole process like his whole goal was to keep them alive get his ego pleasure whatever else and then slowly kill them kong was known to practice what he would say to the woman how to lure them in how to flirt and get his way around them only three months later december 2006 he would be at a dorebang or a karaoke room and he met a female worker there named 
B, who was 45 years old. Again, Kang himself didn't really drink, but he specifically targeted these women because he thought of them as easy. Pretending to have fun, he would tell the worker, hey, do you want to go for a second round? So he would take her inside of his car. The same thing, grapes, S.A., violence, would strangle B with a tie and dispose the body. The time frame of his crime started to get shorter and shorter. Only a week or two later, he got into another Dorebang at another town with Laura Miss Park, who was 36 years old. She was also working there. Same thing, shangled by sheer stockings and dispose. Another week and a half goes by. He can't control himself anymore. He'd lure an older lady, C, who was 52, grape, essay, stocking method, and dispose. As you guys can see, there is no range when it comes to like the age and the woman. He just grabbed anyone that he felt like was easy to control. Three days later now, January 6, 2007, he met a woman, Miss Kim, 37 years old, at another Dorebang. This one's interesting because it seemed like they had a consensual one night together. So they would actually have dinner together. They went to the motel. They had a long conversation in his car, but eventually he went on to strangle her with a necktie and disposed her. This was one of the rare victims where he would actually have a consensual night with her. Later in the investigation, when he was talking about this victim, he even said, oh, that lady, I actually feel bad for. So when the investigator would ask Kang, okay, I mean, then why couldn't you have maybe let her live? Why did you kill her? The psychopath Kung's response was, I set out with the intention of killing someone that day. So I did. I had to. So even if he had a deep conversation, some kind of like a mutual feeling, it didn't matter to him. His intention was set and he did it. Only a day later, January 7th, using the it's cold, don't wait for the bus kind of method again, and he would lure Miss Yoon, who was 20 years old, same routine, but this time he would strangle her with a t-shirt and disposed. All the meanwhile, while he was doing this, he actually had side girlfriends. Like girlfriends that he did not kill. Like girlfriends he actually had a long-term relationship with. It was found out that he had up to three side girlfriends. He would call them after his murders, pretending like nothing has happened and would seek, I guess, some sort of attention and like a calming sensation that he wanted through his side girlfriends. Some he would even meet for dates only two hours after the murder. And these girls would never notice, like it was just normal. During this time, a body would be found of the third victim and it was all over newspaper and TV. And they believe that because of this, Kong stayed low for a couple months. He would come back in November, 10 months later, and would pick up Miss Kim, 48 years old, at the bus stop, again offering a ride in a cold day and would have the same routine and would dispose of her. But this time, because he felt on the edge of maybe getting caught, what he would do is get a clipping nail and he would clip off like the edge of the fingertips and the victim's nails in order to try and conceal the DNA. A month later, 2008, December 19th now, he would do the same thing to a college student who was 21 years old. Again, would cut off her fingernails and the edge of her fingers to try and get rid of his DNA. But thank God by now, in 2008 December, his car was actually filmed in a CCTV and there were multiple witnesses. There's even a CCTV of him going into the bank trying to take money out with the girl's debit card after he killed her. He was wearing some wig and a yellow jacket that just Obviously, nobody wears really like bright yellow in Korea. And a wig, he was just standing out. He would use a condom on his finger so there would be no fingerprint. And this is how eventually police was able to catch Kang after eight victims. So there was a survivor before his first victim. There was a woman in her 40s who actually went on a date with Kung. She survived Kung's kidnapping. I believe she was held for about six hours. And later when investigators asked like, why did you go with him? She would say he had a kind, warm, inviting look to him. And it was actually easy for her to fall for someone like this. And by the way, all of his crimes took place in the back of his car. And back of his car, he made like some kind of a bed back there where he would do this. It, it, it was so planned. He literally planned A to Z with the intention of solely doing this 
to his victims. Again, the crazy thing is he had three girlfriends. When they were being investigated, these girlfriends say they had no idea because he was never violent towards them. And I'm trying to wrap my head around this guy, Kong. Like, how was he so violent to certain people? But then to his side girlfriend, he's totally normal. Like, how does he have a continuous consensual relationship with some woman and then i just don't get this guy like this guy is the ultimate psychopath total numbers victims that he confessed to was eight there might be more out there that he never confessed to because his way of talking to investigators was bring me evidence and i'll confess and two more possibly for his fourth wife and mother-in-law which i don't believe that was ever proven. If you look at all his victims and his wives, a common factor is that they're very small frame. He purposely picked girls. He was no more than 50 kilograms or 110 pounds and short. He was short himself and small frame kind of himself. So he wanted to pick someone that he can control and dominate completely. So the investigation is really what intrigued a lot of people about Kang and what kind of a crazy guy he is. One of Korea's top criminal psychologists says that when he was interviewing Kang, he says that it was like looking at the devil in the eye. Kang would tell the investigators, hey, I'm a psychopath. Like himself, himself, he admitted he's a psychopath. So they would ask, well, why do you think so? Why are you saying that? He would say, I watched a TV program about psychopath and I have a lot of the same traits. They also noticed that Kang had no change in emotions. His tone in his voice also stayed the same. He never got angry, he never got happy. It was just the same monotone emotions and voice. So weird and odd that investigators say that they were pondering themselves is this really a serial killer or not? Like they couldn't even believe it. But unlike other serial killers where they would have no job, they would have money problems, whatever. This guy, Kang had great relationship with his neighbors. He was a masseuse. He operated his own businesses time to time. He was active in his community. Like he would go out on dates. A lot of other Asian serial killers that we've talked about, a lot of them are known to be loners, don't have friends, can't communicate or connect with a lot of people. Kang was the total opposite. He was an extrovert. And Korean investigators actually say that he's closer to a Western psychopath killer than an Asian. So again, Asians tend to have more of a loner kind of personality, but Kang was very out there like a Western Ted Bundy. In Korea, in a lot of serious murder cases, you must reenact and this is used in court as evidence as well. So you see so many people surrounding him while he's reenacting and going to the areas of where he disposed the bodies. During investigation, he also had a lot of odd behaviors. So when they would be investigating him, you know, they would order lunch and usually they would order Korean Chinese food. It's a lot of noodles. He would tell the investigators, noodles are bad. For your body please order me fried rice instead so even after being caught he was very strict with his diet like he this guy cared about his looks and his body even after he was caught but investigators will mention the word woman conversation about just like luring women and being a womanizer his eyes turned like that was his favorite subject he would even brag about how he was able to captivate a woman by just giving him an hour of conversation the famous criminal psychologist who also interviewed kong admits and says that this guy is so good at manipulating and controlling even the conversations that he even almost fell for it kong would start the conversation by saying if you want to talk you should have bought me some water at least even the psychologist almost hesitated like oh let me get you what oh wait a minute this is a psychopath he's trying to control the situation if you give the floor to the psychopath he has to control the room and you will become his puppet it was concluded that kang would solely do this for his own pleasure and ego nothing else he would use women as only a tool for himself and use them for money. There was one time when Kung even said, I don't wanna work like a normal person. Women are just a tool of money for me. I mean, this guy was a classic beta male, insecure. Someone wanted to uphold his non-existing ego only for financial gain, pleasure, I don't even know. At the end of it all, Kong received 
the death penalty. But again, execution in Korea has not taken place since the 90s, so he's sitting in prison still today. Kang was also known as the last captured or known serial killer in Korea, and police believe that this is because now that there's so many CCTVs in Korea, a lot of serial killers just get caught early on so that they cannot do this to other victims. So maybe that is good news. And just like Ted Bundy, if you see his interviews, I saw his interview when you're, where he's talking and again, this guy, like there's no way you'll be able to tell what he has done in his dark side by just him having a conversation. He was smiling in court. He was confessing his love to some other female and asking them to marry them. And the scary thing is because they're two two-sided and so well at concealing this, you're not able to tell this by just small gestures. And again, in the interviews, his side girlfriends, three girlfriends, and his ex-wives, I don't even know how many to count, when they were interviewed, they said they had no idea that this was Kang. And it's really interesting because the male people that were interviewed, like the male people that Kang knew, they all knew he was a womanizer and a player. Maybe not to a degree of a serial killer. Let me know what you guys have thought about today's video. And whenever you guys are going out, even parties, Halloween parties, dates, never ever give your life, your body, whatever to someone that you just don't know too well. Just have an alert senses whenever you're meeting anybody. And thank you so much to Savage Titles for supporting my channel, Mystery Channel. Remember, you guys are supporting my channel by just watching and hitting the like button. And I reply to all my early birds and see you in my next video.